would you describe U.S.-China relations right now? I mean, what happened from where we were two months ago? Thanks for having me, Emily. I, exactly as you said, we had found a detente. There was a phase one trade deal, even if it hadn't gone further. That was promising. And now, since the COVID pandemic, uh, relations have just fallen off a cliff. We are really in free fall. And what you just mentioned on Huawei is one perfect example of that. I'll give you another. There was a recent Pew poll that said two-thirds of Americans have a negative view of China, which is up nearly 20 percent since 2017. And the two presidential campaigns, as you know, seem to be outdoing each other on how tough they can be on China. So this is truly difficult times. Now, the issues run very deep here, especially given that we're in the middle of a global health crisis. U.S. intelligence has concluded that China lied about the extent of the coronavirus outbreak there. You know, do, do you believe that? And if so, is that grounds for a more contentious relationship with China? Uh, I don't have access to intelligence anymore, but I have no doubt, no reason to disbelieve what our intel community is saying. Certainly, an authoritarian regime like China's isn't um, isn't likely to be as forthcoming as they might be on these things. Yes, there is some reason for tougher relations with China. They certainly weren't very clear on the COVID crisis, but frankly, some of this is manufactured by both sides, and I think we're getting into quite dangerous territory. On the U.S. side, we seem to okay, be taking so let's talk all about the Huawei. defensive stances. Yeah, let's. So let's talk about the Huawei curbs. You know, Huawei has said, you know, this is pernicious, this is arbitrary. What do you think? Is it unfair? Uh, Huawei is a bad actor. There's a lot of intelligence suggesting that they're very close to the Chinese military and to Chinese intel. But this particular um, export controls that you just mentioned really seems designed to put Huawei out of business. So it is quite draconian. In the previous segment, you said um, many U.S. semiconductors rely for much of their revenue from China and from Huawei. So this has a huge negative impact on our own industry and, frankly, on our ability to do more research and development and stay in the lead. And, you know, I don't think the Chinese are going to take this laying down. They're already threatening, again, to come out with a, quote, unreliable entities list and will likely make trouble for Cisco, Apple, for some of our American tech companies that uh, have a lot of business in China. Now, one of the concerns is how the United States continues to compete technologically with China. How does the U.S. compete if we're in the middle of this outbreak and a giant economic crisis, whereas China now seems to be out of the outbreak and on the mend? Yes, it, it is starting to come to be on the mend, but I think it's going to be slower uh, then certainly the Chinese government hopes just as our recovery will likely be slow. On the U.S. side, we've been dealing with this tech race with China almost entirely defensively, doing things like keeping Chinese investments out and trying to keep our technology in. Um, my view is that we would be better served um, playing offense to focus on what the U.S. and Europe can do to put our own house in order to compete effectively and to work together, not alone. I mean, there's so many things we can do to help research and development, basic science, to help promote education and science and technology in the United States that wouldn't be tearing China down, but that would be building ourselves up. Now, the White House has you know, tried to get ahead of this issue, for example, by encouraging or, let's say, uh, uh, pushing U.S. chip makers to have their chips built and manufactured in the United States. Taiwan Semiconductor is now doubling down on a $12 billion factory in Arizona. What is the right tact from the administration and from the next administration, should there be a next administration? Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, Emily, because that really is a big deal, that TSMC, which is one of the foremost chip manufacturers um, based in Taiwan, very close to mainland China, uh, a, a country, we would say, a region, Beijing would say, that they're trying to reincorporate. So the fact that TSMC is going to manufacture their most advanced chips 
in the coming years in the United States is a really positive development. And along the lines I was saying, it's being um, positive and building up our own capabilities rather than just trying to push China down. So all good from my perspective.